Hello, welcome to the HVMFC YouTube channel. What I would like for you to do is like and subscribe. Have a blessed day. Coming up on The Inspired Word. God is saying you can't do both. You got to make a choice. You can't stay with me and produce bad fruit. You can't stay with me and produce evil, slander. You can't be sitting there cussing and fighting at folks on the whole time. You can't sit there and continue to go down the road that you can no longer be on. If you will stay connected to me, then connect yourself to me fully because I need you to produce this fruit. Village family, Pastor Charles here, with a quick reminder of our mission, which is to seek the lost, teach the found, and send the disciples. To continue to reach our community and people all around the world, I invite you to join us by financially partnering with us on our mission. To do so, go to www.harvestvillage.org slash give. Thank you. Hello, family, and welcome to HBMFC Online. I'm Pastor Charles Miles, and I have an awesome message prepared for you today. So get your Bibles, your some papers, your notepads as we get ready to get started. As you open your Bibles, we want to open up to John chapter 15. We're starting verse 1 here in a moment. The topic of the day is your purpose is to produce fruit. I want to make it very plain for you today. Give you that understanding. What God has called you to do in this lifetime, you're supposed to produce fruit in that area. You mean your work should show for something. Your work should have some advantage to Christians. Your work should have some advantage to other people. God puts you in that place for a reason. As a matter of fact, when he God called you Christian, or whether when you came to Jesus Christ and became a Christian, God said you are salt of the earth. Okay, you, you are a light that shines on the hill. What that simply means, okay, he's going to put you in places in which you stand now. And because he's putting you in these places in which you stand out, okay, you should be producing fruit from these places. People should look at you and they should see how to act. They should see how to move forward. They should see the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which lives on the inside of you. I want to give you that thought process before we get started, because when we talk about producing fruit, how Jesus gave this to us in the Old Testament, of course, is through parables and stories. But the way he utilized it, he told us these things through uh, these, these teachings, especially through agriculture and through farming and things of this nature. Why? Because the people there, they understood that. They lived in this type of environment where farming and agriculture was a big thing, right? And so when we talk here, I just want to pick up real quick in John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 1. This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown to the fire and burned. Now, the reason I want to discuss this, this is a, a wonderful verse, but the reason I want to discuss this right here, because, see, once you become Christian, once you give your life to Jesus Christ, Jesus is saying, now you have what you need to produce the fruit that I want you to produce, because I am giving you that type of energy to do so. Now, when I first came into this verse, guys, when I first started reading the Bible and started trying to, trying to understand it, I couldn't get fully what he was trying to say through that verse right there. It was way too difficult for me. And uh, it was just more difficult not to understand. But what gave me clarity was actually a verse in Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17, it starts here. It says, so every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Let's start there. The reason Jesus gave us this right here, because he's trying to give us an idea, okay, how trees produce fruit. Most of us right now, uh, if, if we got any age on us, so to speak, we know, hey, that if you got a fruit-bearing tree, it's going to produce fruit. But what he's trying to get over to us, he said a healthy, good tree that's bearing fruit is going to produce good fruit. So let's just take an orange tree for a moment, okay? An orange tree, tree growing up, uh, you know, it's a citrus tree, so to speak, that's going to produce oranges. If it's healthy... 
Okay, the fruit on that tree is going to produce healthy oranges. This is important for us to learn. Because I, I want to get this over to us because, see, I've also seen an old tangerine tree. And I hate to call it old, but it was old. It was very old. Matter of fact, only half of the tree was alive. And, and I'm bringing this up because, see, even the tangerines it produced, the tangerines didn't go, grow quite quite right because something was wrong with them. Every time you would peel them open, you know, it would be hard pieces of tangerine wouldn't be quite, or the, the uh, fruit of the tangerine wouldn't be quite right even when you opened it up and, and peeled it and tried to eat it. And what I realized, my, my, I even talked to my dad about it because when I was a teenager, my dad said, well, that tree's pretty much dead, Charles. It's, it's, on, it's on its way out. You know, it just hasn't been cut down yet. And me looking back over the scripture, because I learned about the scripture way later, I learned about the tangerine tree, actually when I was a teenager, um, living on North Fair Oaks, we used to live in a house there in Altadena. I started to understand if the tree is bad, Okay, the fruit on it is going to be bad. We had the same problem with a walnut tree. We had this walnut tree in the same yard. Uh, in this uh, good-sized walnut tree. And I used to climb up on that tree all the time. Climb into the tree get because they had pretty good-sized branches. And so I would get into the tree. And my dad, one day, said, Charles, stop climbing up that walnut tree. That, that tree is also really old. It's probably on its way out. And my, I said, you know, that time I didn't eat walnuts. But I'm like, Dad, do you see all the walnuts on the tree? He said, unfortunately, Charles, this tree is not healthy. And because it's not healthy, a lot of insects are already get into the, the, the walnuts. So I don't eat the walnuts because there'll be worms and stuff like that in them. Because the tree had no natural defenses at this point because, of, I guess I'm assuming, of this age or be, because it was just getting maybe, maybe either getting old or was no longer good, it would be worms in the, in the walnuts. And I'm like, oh, that's disgusting, right? But that kept me also out of the tree. Now, I'm bringing this up because, see, there's no way for a good tree to produce bad fruit. And that's what Jesus is telling us. But there's also no way for a bad tree to produce good fruit. Guys, what Jesus is telling us, even in John 15, when we just read it, he's telling us there's no possible way for you to produce, produce the fruit that God wants you to produce separate from him. Okay, you cannot be disconnected from God, disconnected from Christ, and produce the fruit he wants you to produce. Why? Because he, he, he gives you the energy to produce that fruit. Now we got to go a little further in the thought process of a tree. A tree has three main parts. Okay, you have the roots, you got the trunk, and you have the branches. But let me give you how this works. And, and it blows me away when I, when I learn this, because a lot of people don't know this. The roots, of course, you know, connect that tree to the ground. That's where it gets its water. That's where it gets its, its energy. That's where it gets the, the food, the nutrients it needs. Okay, the trunk is the support, okay, to the branches of that tree. Now, with that being said, a lot of people don't realize it's the branches that determine what fruit it produces. It's simply meaning, I'll give you this thought process about a citrus tree. Did you know on, on a citrus tree, that you can take a branch from a grapefruit tree, a branch from a, a lemon tree, a, a branch from a lime tree, a branch from a tangerine, a branch from an orange tree, because they're all citrus fruits. If you take those branches and you put them on one tree, meaning you graft them in, if you don't know what grafting is, I can give you a quick rough thought process right now. Grafting is when you take a branch off another form of a uh, tree. Simply meaning, uh, I take a grapefruit branch off a grapefruit tree and I put it on a lemon tree or an orange tree. I can take that branch, okay, and I can graft it in or put it on another citrus tree. And that branch, because it has control over the type of fruit it produces, it produces the fruit of the tree it came from. Simply meaning, if I take a branch of a grapefruit tree and put it on an orange tree, because they're both citrus, uh, uh, citrus fruits, okay, that branch will still produce grapefruits on that orange tree. Why? Because the, 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 matter, the fact of the matter is, the roots and that trunk they're still the same thing, that they're citrus. It's all citrus based. And because it's all citrus based, it's pushing the nutrients it needs to produce citrus like fruits. You ever thought about this? And I hope I'm not losing you guys this morning, but think about this for, for, for a moment. You know, it says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self control. Nine different fruits of the Holy Spirit. That means this is the fruit that God is, wants us to produce. Okay, the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, and when we truly do what God asks us to do, when we truly are following Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and we live in our life with God, God is saying there's no way you can't produce that fruit. Why? Because see, that fruit is on the inside of the Holy Spirit, which now lives in you. You have the ability now to produce that fruit. That's what he's trying to tell us. See, when we get connected to him, 
can truly connect to them, we now have the type of energy we need to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of God is what I'm trying to tell you right now. See, a lot of people don't understand why they're not producing right for Jesus Christ. You have to ask yourself, are you connected to him? Okay, are you truly connected to him? Because he right here, once again, let's go back now to John chapter 15 and we'll read the verse one more time. Jesus is saying, I am the vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does fruit, bear fruit in me, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, simply meaning, if you're not connected to Jesus, you can't produce what God wants you to produce. That's where that comes from. And when you truly get that understanding, God is saying, I'm giving you what you need. I'm giving the nutrients you need. I'm giving you the understanding you need. I, I, I am the one pushing everything on the inside of you to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but you have to be truly connected to me. Now, I may have branches, okay, that get grafted in, so to speak, but because they don't want to produce the type of fruit I want them to produce, I see they're, they're no good. Let me break, let me go back now. Most of the time when you see fruit trees, okay, there's always going to be some branches that do not produce fruit, even though it's that branch responsibility to produce fruit. So when you see a branch that's not producing fruit, what do you do? You cut it off. The reason you cut it off is because you don't want that branch sucking up energy from the other fruit producing branches, okay, taking energy from them. That's why you cut it off. It's no good because it's not fulfilling its purpose. That's why you cut it off. See, when you got a fruit-bearing tree, okay, and, and those branches are supposed to be producing fruit, if it's not doing what it's supposed to do, Jesus is saying it got to go. You can't stay there. Okay, you, you came in, you know, your own good terms, but it, it's not right. It's not working out the way it's supposed to work out. Now, it's something because, see, we as Christians, when we give our life to God, we basically are grafted into Jesus Christ. Mean, we mean simply meaning we are connected to him. That's all I'm talking about right now. When you say grafting, you're basically saying something that was not once connected to the, to the main source is now connected to this source. Now, the, the, because you have the energy you need to produce the fruit that you're supposed to produce, Jesus said now it's up to you on what you're going to do. So I'm basically right now I'm trying to give you this analogy that says you are a branch. Okay, and once you're connected to Jesus Christ, you have fruit to produce for him. You're supposed to be carrying out his will for your life. You're supposed to be what, gathering others, so to speak. And, and as we go through this process... The Lord said, my father is watching. My, as a matter of fact, my father is the vine dress, dresser. Now, I know you've been connected to me, but you've been connected to me, but you're not doing the work you're supposed to do. You're not producing the fruit you're supposed to be producing. And because my father is watching over this, okay, he's, he's saying to you right now, either start the work you're supposed to start, or he himself, he says his father's the vine dresser, or he himself is going to cut you away from me. Simply stating, okay, you can't stay connected to me if you're not producing any fruit. And now, sometimes when we look at this, this is a hard statement. Because see, we as Christians have to realize, okay, there's a work for us to do. We don't just become Christians and connected to Jesus Christ, you know, and stay that way. No, we become Christians and get better. We become Christians and become more whole in Christ Jesus. We become Christians and now we produce the fruit that he wants us to produce. Now, there's a timetable that God gives us. I don't know that timetable. Nobody does. Simply meaning is we have to grow up in Christ. Okay, God knows we're new Christians and we don't know anything yet about Jesus most of the time when we give our lives to him, right? But as we give our lives, as our understanding and our growth takes place, because see, when we start growing, we actually start to produce fruit. We used to have this little lemon tree in my backyard of my old house. And we had bought a few of those miniature trees I had when we first got the house, but I didn't, I didn't realize they were going to be that small for that long. These trees probably are not supposed to get more than seven or six feet tall, right? But the trees really did grow slowly. I bring this up because, see, this little lemon tree, man, I mean, it, it was like that, you can't even see my hand, about, about that tall, so about waist high. But this little lemon tree used to put out some lemons. We may have, you know, eight or nine lemons on that lemon tree every year. That little small tree didn't have a lot of branches, but it sure was producing. But then we used to have this purple plum tree in the front yard. And it's something because, see, I, when I was a little kid, we used to have this huge Huge purple plum tree at, at a house we lived on when I was real young. And they used to have the little sweetest 
little plums on them, that, that purple plum tree. And so when I saw it, when we were moving to that new house, I was so thankful for that purple plum tree. I said, man, you know, it's hard to find purple plums. You just don't, you don't see them like, anymore. You know, of course, you got your, your, your normal plum trees, what we see here in California, but those are kind of, you know, kind of bigger plums. But purple plum trees, are, you know, you, uh, purple plums are, from a purple plum tree are usually pretty small, but very sweet. So I couldn't wait to get a hold of some of that fruit. But year after year, and we lived there, Man, we lived there over 11 and, a half, 11, 11 and a half, 12 years. Okay, and that tree, that tree for the first five, six years never produced any fruit. You know, I said, man, this tree is not worth, you know, not, not worth anything. You know, it's because it's not fulfilling its purpose. See, it's something, how you can look at something that's pretty, but when you know it's meant for so much more than just to be pretty, that you want more from it. Because it was pretty when you look out in the front yard and you see it. But because I knew it was supposed to, supposed to produce plums and it did not do so, it, it bothered me. It bothered me so much that my wife decided, you know what, we got to get rid of that tree. And so we did. And so it's not that we're so much different, you know, in our actions, even from what the Bible says. But it's a natural thing to get rid of something that's not producing its purpose or that's not carrying out its purpose. It's like having a radio and it doesn't work. Okay, if I got a radio and it don't work, what's the next spot for the radio? Trash can, right? And it's not hard for us to, to, to visualize that because we understand that, right? If you got, you got a radio and it was working at first, and all of a sudden, here it is, a couple years down the line, it's not working, you get rid of it. Why? Because it cannot fulfill its purpose. It's not doing it. it, it has, it's a done deal at this point. And the same thing here when the Lord is talking to us. Now, I, I want to go back for just this moment and talk about the, the fruit we're supposed to produce. But I'm going to use a regular tree once again as an example. Have you ever noticed when you look at an orange tree that it's not producing apples? It's not producing peaches? It's not producing anything for, from another type of family of fruit. Right? Because these days, you know, you might go into a Home Depot and you can find a little citrus tree. And it might be growing lemons, grapefruits, oranges, all on one tree. Why? Because it's of the same family. It's like the fruit of the Holy Spirit. See, you ever know love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control? See, these are all God-type fruits, right? Because they're God-type fruits, right? It, it can grow, grow through us through the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. But notice, it's not saying it's going to grow evil. It's not going to grow slander. It's not going to grow... Uh, killing, stealing. It's, it's not going to grow jealousy. It's not going to grow all these other bad things. Why? Because God doesn't have that to give. He doesn't have it to give. And see, that's what we need to understand. See, we as people, okay, when we attach ourselves to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God is saying those old things in which you used to be attached to, they no longer should live on the inside of you. They no longer should be part of who you are. Yes, I understand that it takes time to get this on the inside of you, but you moving, you producing fruit, you getting better at me, that, those other things ought to be let go. They can't stay on the inside of you no more because it's no good for you. The problem a lot of us have, you know, because we have the ability to produce both types of fruit, you know, we, we're trying to do what God has asked us to do. We're trying to, trying to live our lives for Jesus, but we keep holding on to the, to the old way, the, the old way of the world. We keep holding on to our past. We keep holding on to things that keep us producing the old thing, right? And the problem is, God is saying you can't do both. You got to make a choice. You can't stay with me and produce bad fruit. You can't stay with me and produce evil, slander. You can't be sitting there cussing and fighting at folks the whole time. You can't sit there and continue to go down the road that you can no longer be on. If you will stay connected to me, then connect yourself to me fully because I need you to produce this fruit. Because if you're not producing the fruit I want you to produce, what good are you for me? That's rough. I know it is rough. Because I'm a young man. Okay, especially when I was in my 20s, my 30s. I was a young man at the time that tried to live that way. I, I wanted to be saved by Jesus Christ, but yet do everything I used to do. And I, I couldn't, you know, I remember when my wife and then another, another Christian got a hold of me. She says, you know, when I say my wife, my wife used to always talk to me about, you know, we're Christian now, Charles, you know. And we, I know we're supposed to be learning more about God. We're supposed to be doing better. But how can we do better if we keep doing the same things over and over again? You know, they start sticking with me. Because when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ, my thought process is I did all I need to do. Right? I don't need to go no further. I, I, Jesus is my Lord and Savior, but that was supposed to change my actions and my own thought process. It's not that, and not until I gained understanding through His Word that I realized I'm supposed to be different. Okay, I have to change my life. I have to renew my thinking, right? Renew my mind. And so I get new things on the inside of me so I can get the old things out. But that takes time to go through the process. But you never, you'll never start that process. You'll never truly belong to Jesus until you go through that process. Amen? Amen, amen. Guys, I, I know this may be a little hard this morning to take in, but we got to get this because, see, it, it's something you can be Christian for 20 years and never produce fruit. 
And with the truth of the matter is, you've been calling yourself Christian for 20 years, but you're not producing anything that God has told you to produce. And the problem is, if you look at Scripture, you're in danger of hellfire like that. And I, and I know that's tough. And a lot of you may not want to hear that, but you absolutely are. Because if you think about this, everything we, we read, when it talks about being connected to Jesus, it talks about us producing, right? And producing what God wants us to produce. You know, it's a scripture, I think it's in John, but I, I know it's in one of the gospels, one of the four gospels. But, oh my goodness, it's slipping my mind. Guys, if we come back, I'll, I'll make sure I say it out loud. But basically, it's, it's something like this right there. The only folks that will make it into heaven are the ones who do the will of my Father. It's not the ones who call me Lord and Savior, because Jesus already said, okay, many people will call me Lord, Lord, but because they don't know me, you know, they'll be what, pushed away from me. I won't accept them. Right? It's when you do his will. It's when you lock on to him. It's when you truly trust in him, when you give your life to him in that type of way where you're connected to him. As a matter of fact, you remember how God equates love? If you've forgotten that, I've, I've talked this many times, but you must remember how God equates love when it comes to him. Okay, He says, the, for the ones who love me, okay, how you show love, brother, to God is through obedience. Through obedience. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I ask? This is so important for us to take in because these are kind of things we're talking about today, right? When we're giving our life to Jesus Christ, it's time for us to produce. Okay, not the old things we did because hey, we produce for the world. If, we, if we're being honest with ourselves, I mean, I know I did. I don't got to talk about nobody else. I produced for the world 100%. You know, I was out there doing all kinds of wrong things, dragging people into my wrong things. You know, I mean, I mean, man, and, and we was reveling that. Simply mean, you know, hey, having fun, laughing, joking, living that life, right? I, I know all about that portion of it. And, but I realized when I became Christian, that's not the life I'm supposed to live. Okay, I'm not supposed to do those same things, right? And maybe those same people, I'm, I'm supposed to go back and try to gather them so we can come into this new life together, you know? But I can't stay there. I can't stay there no more. I, I, that life is no longer for me because I, you know, I'm trying to change my life because I'm working on changing my life. I've become a new person now. I'm not the same Charles I used to be back when I was in my younger 20s and my, my teenage years. No, I'm a new man. And I'm a man that's working on getting better each and every day. Amen? Amen, amen. So real quick, I want to go, a couple, go back to the fruit tree again. And I'm going to give you three points about a fruit tree. Just three points. Three, three things you need to know about fruit. Okay, number one, fruit always bears the character or nature of the tree in which it comes from. Mm, this is good. This is good. Just like an orange tree produces oranges, just like an apple tree produces apples, just like a peach tree produces peaches, just like a pomegranate tree produces pomegranates. Okay, it's going to always, fruit is always going to bear the nature in which the tree, it comes from. We need to understand that. So when Jesus is saying, okay, that you must bear fruit for me, the, the reason he knows you're bearing fruit is because he sees it in your actions. That's it. He sees it in your actions. You know when you give your life truly to God? You know when God says he, he, he truly sees it in you? It's when he sees your actions. It's, you know, with the, we got this confession of faith. Yes, that's how we start the process. That's how we give our life to Jesus when we can, you know, fess that Jesus is Lord and believe in the heart that God is raising from the dead. This is Romans 10, 9. That's absolutely true. But that's the starting of the process. But the part that changes you, that changes your life, is when you, as, you, as you go into this process, you start aligning your life up with God and his word. And when you do so, you, you, the, you, the things you do start to change. That means, simply means your actions are changing. And once your actions are changing, okay, now you're actually showing the love of God. You know, actually, you're actually living out what God has asked you to do, right? You're actually producing the fruit that God wants you to produce. That's how he sees it. He sees it in your actions, not in your lip service. Because what Jesus tell us, I think, it was, I think this was in the book of Matthew, but you have to read the King James Version. It said, these people draw near to me with their mouths. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See, Jesus is telling us right now, people, you know, they, 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 they want to come close to me. Okay, they want to get next to me. But, you know, it's just it's lip service. Okay, they honor with their lips, like, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you did. He said, but their hearts, their hearts represent what? Their actions. Their actions are, are, are far from me. The, 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 way they, the way they do things, the way they act, you know, when they get close to me, they, they you know, they, they say they, they, they honor me. You know, they thank you, Lord. You know, praise you, Lord. You know, but the things they do, they don't have a heart. The heart that I've asked them to have. How does he know that? Because your actions show that. Your actions show that. I remember some years ago, I used to be in this habit. And uh, 
It was a terrible habit, but I used to always say, the Lord knows my heart. Now, a lot of people may think that's, you know, that's, well, that's not a terrible habit, Charles. That's a terrible habit. That's a terrible habit. And I had somebody have to break it down to me one day, and this is one of my good buddies who's also a pastor. So, Pastor Andre Morton, God bless you, brother, for this, because uh, I wasn't a pastor at this time. Matter of fact, I was uh, pretty young. I was still in college. And Dre's, uh, his sister had passed, and we had all been friends growing up as little kids. I've been with Dre that long. He's about a year older than I am. But, uh, man, you know, it was just, I was, I got a chance to come back home uh, from Arizona when his sister had passed, and me and my buddy Kenny went to see him. You know, and, and it's something. When you go see, Andre had been at that time, he was already Christian and walking that walk. And even as a young man, I give it up to him, man. I was always, always proud of Andre, man. Uh, <laughs> Andre, I'm going to put you out of here. My nickname was Stop Sign. And, and, and Andre's nickname when he was little was Gremlin. That was our two nicknames. And uh, we were heck of a defensive player, boy. You, you don't want to see him on that field, boy. He'd, he'd knock your block off, so to speak, as a linebacker. That's what he was. Anyway. I went to go see him, me and my buddy Kenny, after his sister had passed, and I got a chance to, when I got a chance to come home from Arizona. And I remember talking to him that night outside. And that's when he's talking, you know, he says, you know, stop saying, how do you know you're saved? You know, how, how do you know you belong to the Lord? And I said, I told him, I said, you know, I, I just try to do the right thing, Andre. You know, I, you know, I know the Lord knows my heart. He says, be careful of that stop sign. That's, that's not a good statement. You know, one thing about the Lord knowing your heart, it's that something means the Lord, Lord knows who you are. He knows your actions. And he, he knows, okay, if you do what he asks you to do, you're for him. But if you continue to do, you know, everything but what he tells you to do, that you're not for him. You know, and that sat with me. You know, and, I, you know, of course, you know, we, we had our little talk, gave him a hug, as, as we normally do when we greet each other. And then we left that night, me and Kenny. But that stayed on my mind for a long time. You know, what did you mean by that? You know, this is my boy. He, he, he you know, he, and he's, I say my boy, he loved me, you know, and I love him. But I'm giving you this thought process because I knew he wasn't trying to insult me in any way, shape, or form. But he was trying to get me to recognize, you know, truly think about what I'm saying. When he says God knows you, aren't you saying? He's saying you're saying God knows you. And when one thing God knows about you, he knows if you're for him, okay, if you're not for him. And God's not basing it on your, your feelings and emotions. He's basing it on your actions. Right? Even we as Christians, right? We're not get really judged at the end of, of, of time, so to speak, when it comes to the Lord. We, but we will give an account for our actions. Every man, every woman will give an account for every action that is taken. Why? Because the Lord will match up what you did with what your heart. Isn't that something? Right? So we've got to be so careful with saying to somebody that God knows your heart. Because God knows if you're a person that, that lives for him, not that a person that thinks for him. Because too many people think, well, you know, I, I'm going to do something nice for this person. I'm going to do something nice for this person. But do everything else wrong? No. It doesn't work for you like that. As a matter of fact, Jesus even tells us in, in Scripture, okay, Jesus is written in the Bible, in the Old Testament, I should say, your good works are filthy rags. Right? And, and the Lord was telling his people this back in the Old Testament. Old Testament, why? Because he said, you're trying to practice these good things, but you're doing it separate from me. You don't truly have my best interest at heart. A lot of times you're doing these good things, why? So you can be seen, so you can be shown, so you can be shown as good. But the Lord said, you're still disconnected from me. And Jesus is trying to get us to understand right now. Only through me can you be connected to God. Only through me can you get the, the God type of energy you need to produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit. See, somebody may, may be able to produce one or two, but Jesus gave, it's nine different fruits here. He says, you're supposed to produce them all in every area. Right? You find yourself in short in one area? Hey, you start working on an area and build that area up, right? So we can't neglect any of this because when God is telling us he wants us healthy and whole, he wants us truly before him, we're going to be truly for him when we're producing this fruit in our lives. But we must be connected to him. And we got to stop giving ourselves lip, lip service. And the lip service I'm talking about right now, when the Lord knows my heart, that's a statement that was going to land, unfortunately, so many people in the pit of hell. It is. Because they think their good works are the very thing that's going to connect them to the Heavenly Father. Their good, work, good works are filthy rags. And it's, it's sad to me to say that. You know, and I shouldn't be sad to say it out loud. It's just, 
I know it's going to hurt some people when, when, they, when they hear that. I know, I, but the truth of the matter is, one thing about Jesus Christ, what Jesus gave was the truth to people. Even though sometimes he knew that truth was going to cut them. He still gave it to them because he wanted them to know what was good and what was real and how to get connected if they truly wanted to. See, I realized when Andre was telling me that day, he was not trying to hurt me. He was trying to get me to make a true choice. Charles, I want you to understand this. Stop saying, you know, get your head out of the gutter. Stop thinking, you know, you can be good on your own separate from God. It doesn't work that way. And I'm so thankful that he gave that to me because when he gave that to me, he gave me the understanding that I needed at that time that I need to truly connect myself to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Okay, stop thinking that my heart, my filthy rags, stop thinking that my filthy ways, my sinful ways are going to be enough to get me to Christ Jesus. Why? Because I'm giving a little money here to this person. As a matter of fact, that was one of the things I told him. You know, I try to give help out the homeless and I try to do a little bit like this right here. He probably wanted to laugh at me, but he didn't do it. Right? Because when I think about some of the stuff I said to him, it's laughable even to me. Because, see, I was trying to prove that I was good enough on my own to get connected to God, our Heavenly Father. That's what I was trying to do. And I knew he knew better later on. I didn't understand at the time, but I knew he knew better. But he didn't embarrass me. He didn't shame me. He just said, stop sign. There's so much more that you need to do to be connected to Christ Jesus. And once he started giving me that understanding, it was enough that he left on the inside of me. That, yeah, it took me some time to get connected, but I did. I did. I'm also a pastor like he is, you know, and it, it's a blessing. I, the, I didn't know I would be going down this road, but here I am. But now, moving forward, I want us to get this right here, or going back to the uh, fruit always bears the character or the nature of the tree in which it comes from. See, God knows, or Jesus knows right that you're connected to him when you produce his type of fruit. As a matter of fact, the more fruit you produce, okay, the more you look like Jesus. I hope God would like to say it to you. The more you look like Jesus, you know, like that little lemon tree, you know, you may start off producing a small amount of fruit when you first begin, right? But as you continue to grow, as you continue to blossom, as you continue to get bigger, right, your fruit becomes more and more. Why? Because you're becoming greater and greater in Christ Jesus. That's just what it is, family. All right? So I got this one quick note for you. To bear fruit in Christ means to reflect the character and conduct of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say that one more time. To bear fruit in Christ means to reflect the character and conduct of Jesus Christ. Now, real quick, I've been telling you about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You guys can find that in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 is where you can find the fruit of the Holy Spirit, just in case some of you guys do not know. Now, I want to go back here. I want to go back to verse 4. Because Jesus repeats himself here in in verse uh, chapter 15, John chapter 15, verse 4. He you know, and every time you find in the Bible, especially when Jesus is speaking and he repeats himself right away, he's trying, I mean, over and over. He said this for a reason. He, he's just not duplicating himself or duplicating what he said just for fun. He's doing it because he's paramount, okay, that you get what he's saying to you. He's saying, now abide me and I in you. Okay, as, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide me. Remember I told you right now that the branch is the one that produces the fruit, but the energy okay, comes from the, from the roots and the trunk. The energy itself comes from the vine. So Jesus is saying right now, because Jesus is talking from a grapevine standpoint right now when he's talking here in John chapter 15. He's saying, okay, I basically, I am the vine, okay, and you are the branches. See, without... Him. See, without being connected to him, how would the branch get energy? How would a branch, a branch get the nutrients it needs unless the vine is connected to the, to the branch, right? The same thing with a tree. Okay, unless the, unless the branch is connected, okay, to the trunk of the tree, it's no way for it to get energy, right? So think about that for a moment. So if, I'm just going to do this right here. So if I'm a branch that's connected to the, to, this is a terrible tree, but if I'm a branch and I'm disconnected from the root of the tree, there's no way for that branch to live in me. There's no way for that branch to, to produce what I want it to produce. There's no way for it to do so. So when Jesus said, make sure you stay connected to me, okay, stay connected to him. Now, the difference is you got to make that decision to produce. Because see, you produce it does not happen automatically. The branch is in charge of producing. That's what I was talking to you guys earlier when I was talking, just giving you the analogy of the tree. Okay. You can connect another citrus branch to any citrus tree, right? And the branch is responsible for producing the fruit. The same thing God is telling us, okay? Yes, you got all the energy you need. When you give your life to Christ Jesus, you are now connected, okay, to the right structure. You are now connected 
to, 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 the, to the trunk. You're now connected to the vine. And because you're connected, you have everything you need to produce fruit. But will you decide to produce fruit? See, now this is when it comes down to us. We have a choice to make. That's everything I was just talking about a few minutes ago. And this is, this is I think, more clear and more plain before you. You have a choice to make. Will you decide that you want to produce fruit or will you stay the same? Because there's a problem coming if you choose to stay the same. And that problem is the vine dresser's coming. Okay, the person coming by to, to love off any branch that's not produced. Any branch that's not producing the fruit that it's supposed to produce is getting ready to be thrown into the fire. It's giving you this analogy right now because you need to understand if I'm not connected, okay, if I'm not producing the fruit, even once I become connected, okay, I'm still going to go into the same place. So once I get connected, I'm not going to sit there and waste my purpose. I'm not going to sit there, okay, and be connected, but yet do nothing because there will come a time if I don't produce anything, I'm going to be judged on that. And I'm dang sure don't want to be thrown into the fire. Amen? Amen, amen. Let's go to the next one. Number two. Fruit is always visible. <laughs> I love this right here. Fruit is always visible. You know, you never looked at a tree out in nature and said that tree is producing fruit, but you can't see it. Right? Well, that's an orange tree, but I never see no fruit on it. Guess what it's not? It's not an orange tree. That's a lemon tree. That's a peach tree, but I never see no fruit in it. Guess what it's not? It's not a lemon tree or a peach tree. Well, people say, they may come and say, well, it's of the same family. Wait a minute. If it's a fruit-bearing tree and it's not producing fruit, it's not a fruit tree. Well, you know, I planted a fruit tree there, but it's not producing fruit. Then it's time for that fruit tree to be thrown into the fire. Chop it up because it's only be good for firewood. That's all it is. And you see, we can understand it the way I just said it. I know we can because that's very plain. Very plain, right? But when it comes to us, we may not want to look at it that way, but we need to see it that way because that's what God is telling us, right? There is no invisible fruit. Okay, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, they show in our actions. Okay, the fruit that God wants us to produce is these are actions in which we take to live out this in our lives. Okay, there is no such thing as invisible fruit. Okay, if it's invisible and I can't eat off of it, I can't use it for nothing, what good is it? You know, I've said this to you guys many times. It's like having a, a beautiful apple that's sitting on the table, right? You got this beautiful apple, it got this nice color on it. I like that, I like these Fuji apples, kind of got that red, yellowish, orange, little, little tinge to it. You know, pretty good size apple, got that little Christmas when you when you Christmas to it, when you bite into it, it got just a, just a right touch of sugar. The right touch of just that, that sweetness on the inside of it. When you bite into it, it's mmm, mmm, good, right? And, and, and you know it because you, you, you're tasting it, right? But it, you know you know it because when you take down, you take inside, you chew, and you, and you swallow it down because part of who you are. That's when you get the nutrients of that fruit. Why? Because you can eat off of it. See, when you think about fruit, guys, when you think about the very thing you're supposed to produce, I want you to understand it's not just for you. It's for others also. Okay, every, you know, every fruit tree that produces something, it's not just for that fruit tree to have fruit and it look good on the tree. No, somebody's supposed to be able to come in and take from it. Come in and utilize the fruit it has. Why? To energize them. See, one thing, uh, you know, we need to understand is Christians are supposed to produce Christians. Amen? Amen, right? And so when you using the fruit of the Holy Spirit, those nine different fruits he's talking about, right? See, what that's going to do is get other people to want what you have. It's going to get other people to want what you have. And when other people start to see what you have, they can get also, you start to bring others in. You get it? You start to make other Christians. You start, you start to grow these things up. And I'm getting this over to you right now because, see, your actions are the very thing that show this. The reason I'm telling you right now, there is no invisible fruit. Why? Because if you got something that nobody can see, nobody can eat off of, something that nobody can taste, Scripture says what? Taste and see that the Lord is good. That's what he means. Simply means take me in. When you take God in, you're going to know who he truly is. When you take him in, you're going to see the benefit that he gets to those who love him. But you got to take him in. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The same thing the Lord telling us. Somebody should be able to, 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 to look at you and see the fruit that you are producing when you work for me. When you do for me. When you belong to me. You, you're supposed to, that's supposed to show on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. So there is no such thing as an invisible fruit. That's like, once again, going back, you've been going to church for 20 years, but ain't nobody else know you're Christian. Right? You've been saying you're Christian for 20 years, but nobody will know it by based on your actions. Come on now. 
I, I, know, I know it's difficult, right? I, I know it's difficult. And we all have bad days. I'm not trying to live in judgment of anybody because I realize we all fall short in our own way at different times. But guys, that should not be the, our normal way we conduct ourselves. That should not be our continual actions, right? Our continual actions should be that we are producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit on a regular basis. And the few and far between is the, when we fall short. Okay, even when we fall short, God says he is faithful and just to forgive, right? So we ask for forgiveness, repent, and we get back connected to him the right way. Amen? Amen. So we don't live in that fallen place. We continue, continue to move short, eh? to move forward. Amen? Amen. And number three, number three, I'm going to give you this last one to you. I'll give this last one to you. Number three, the fruit you produce will be made for more than just you. And I want to bring this back up. I know I talked about it a tiny bit in number two, but number three, this is important. Okay, fruit on a tree. It's for the benefit of someone else. Through your fruit that you have is to draw others. It's to draw the near, others near. Even when the Lord's calling us, we are the salt of the earth. You know, we're the light that shines on top of the hill. We're drawing people to us based on how we treat them and how we act towards them, right? And then we point them to our Heavenly Father. We point them to Jesus Christ. We, we, we give them our Lord and Savior. Why do we give them this? Because God wants to use them in the same type of way. He wants others to be connected to them. He, want, he wants other people to be able to see them so they can draw them in also. Amen? Amen, amen. It's something when we first give our lives to God. Because when we first give our lives to God, even myself, you know, when I made that confession, I remember walking into this little back room, uh, little small back room into the, of the church when I made that confession because they want to talk to you about the decision that you've made. And as we said, as I walked into that small back room and I, and I talked to somebody about the decision I made, I, you know, I, I left church that day and I felt the exact same way. I was happy I made the decision to give Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, but I, I didn't feel any different. You know, I think I just knew at that, that point that I gave Jesus in my life, but I didn't know the fullness of what I meant by that. Okay, I just, I, there's no way most time for you to know the fullness of what you meant by that, especially when you first give your life, because at the truth of the matter, you've just been birthed. You're a baby. You know, you're, you're a child. But that gives me a thought process of a pregnant woman. You know, a lady, when a, when a lady and man come together and, and a child is, 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 is or a, a, one of their eggs on the inside of her is, is first conceived, she usually doesn't know it right away. Right? I mean, at the moment of, of you know, when that, that egg is, is fertilized, she doesn't know it. You know, it's, it, when it's the, really the moment of conception. And the reason I'm talking about right here, because, see, this moment of conception is a secret thing. You see, it's like when you give your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right? You don't quite feel any difference yet, because you don't even know what the difference is you're supposed to feel. But as you continue to, to, to now study, continue to learn more about him, see, you start to grow and become more full. And more full of what? More full of who he is. You, you get start to get more understanding. You get to learn more. I'm supposed to be a little bit different here. You get to start to renew your mind with the right way of thinking. See, this lady who's become pregnant, see, as the pregnancy continues on, she starts to realize, oh, there's some change happening in me. And sometimes she may not even know what's going on. Right? But as she goes a little further, you know, sometimes they may become sick. Sometimes, you know, she just may say, I'm, I'm getting a little more fuller. I'm feeling a little more heavier. Right? She said, I can't quite see it yet, but I feel this way. Right? But then after so long, she realized certain things with her body is not happening regularly anymore. Then she finally goes to that doctor or she takes a test and says, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. See, what I'm trying to get over to you guys right now. See, when you truly give your life to Christ, Christ has birthed something on the inside of you. He's giving you everything you need to be this new man, this new woman. But he's just giving you just, just the smallest portion of it. Because, see, in you, you're going to have to grow this up on the inside of you. And, yes, he's going to help you do it as long as you stay with him. But you have got this new thing on you. You, you, you. you become this new creature. Matter of fact, Scripture says you become a new creature in Christ once you give your life to him. That simply means because this thing is on the inside of you. It's getting ready to become full grown if you will allow it and choose for it. So you got to choose for it, right? Because you got you're the one that has to nurture it. Just like this lady when she becomes pregnant, right? People think, you know, when the baby comes, that's when you gotta nurture it. No, the mother's nurturing that baby. Okay, from the moment she realizes she is pregnant, she's nurturing that baby even before she knew it, right? And I'm giving you this thought process because, see, what do mothers do once they become pregnant? You know, you know any loving mother is gonna make sure now they do what's right for the baby. Because they know they got they got they got life that's getting ready to be birthed on the inside of them, and they know they got to grow this life up, okay, until it can be birthed naturally into this world. 
It's the same way we're supposed to be with Jesus Christ. It's the same thing when we give our, our lives to him, right? We, we, it's time for us to you know, learn more about him. It's time for us to, to take on who he wants us to be. You know, it's time for us to now find, figure out what that purpose is that he will have us to carry out. It's time for us to start producing the fruit that he wants us to produce. Family, I'm giving you all this because, see, when we get a chance to know what our purpose is, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ and we, we continue to commit ourselves to him where he tells us what our fullness of our purpose is, then it's time for us to continue to grow ourselves and start living in that purpose. God has birthed a new thing in you. And some of us haven't seen anything new. Why? Because we haven't nurtured this birth that he's put on the inside of us. We haven't nurtured the baby that he put on inside of us, so to speak. And we've been holding this thing for 20 years. But God is saying, birth it. Bring it forth. But you can only do it when you truly connect it to me. Stop giving people lip service. Stop giving yourself lip service. Stop deceiving you. Stop deceiving you. Birth this thing on the inside of you. Okay, I'm ready to come full force on the inside of you. I'm ready to work fully in the purpose that I've given you with you. But will you choose? Will you choose me? Will you choose to really carry out your purpose? Family, I... Ooh, I'm a little long today, a little longer than I thought it was, but I think I'm going to pick up with this next week. I hope I, I, this is a really good area to start working in for the next few weeks because, see, living in your purpose is everything that God wants you to do. But you can only truly live in the purpose that he give, gave you when you're connected to him. Amen? Amen, amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you, Father, that you continue to working on inside of us. Help us, mighty God, to grow and become the children that you want us to become. Thank you, Lord, that you give us your wisdom, your understanding. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to be better than what we currently are. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing us, cleansing us of all of all wrong. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing us of our sins. Thank you for being faithful, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen, amen, amen. Well, family, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to see you guys next week. Of course, if you have any questions, you can reach us at admin at harvestvillage.org. Have a blessed week now. Bye. If you are the sound of my voice this morning and you want to know Jesus Christ for the very first time, Romans 10 and 9 simply states that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. So if that's you this morning, you want to meet Jesus for the very first time, simply declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead. And if that's you this morning, you now belong to the kingdom of God. That's the first step. But there's a powerful second step that you must take. Okay, it's the second step is your transformation to become a disciple of Christ. Okay, for you to transform, you have to pick up the word of God and start reading it. Start taking it in. To get with a good Bible-based church so the people, the people there can help you to become the person that you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. If you can't find nobody in the area in which you're in, you can always find us at harvestvillage.org. Okay, you can email us at admin at harvestvillage.org. And that should be on the bottom of your screen, admin at harvestvillage.org. Amen? Amen. For any reason you may have stepped away from the Lord, okay, and you're looking to come back, 1 John 1, 9 simply says the Lord is faithful to forgive all those who ask for forgiveness. So repent. Turn away from what you're doing and turn back towards God. Ask for forgiveness. The Lord is ready to put you back in your rightful position. Amen. Also, get with a good Bible-based church as they continue to help you to find the Lord okay, and walk in his truthfulness. Well, family, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you for joining me this morning. Okay, Thank you for listening to the word. Thank you for studying the word. And have a blessed day, family.